Hey, I'm back with another lick of the week, and uh, we're now in the year 2009, so Happy New Year, everybody. Um, hope your banjo playing year is great this year. Uh, we're going to move from the first and second frets, where we've done the majority of the low position C licks in stroke style, and I'm going to move up to an area of the neck in between these two positions. The, the first position is the C chord at one and two, and then we're, we're going to move up here to the fifth fret and play some pretty common scrug licks. But there's one lick that bridges the gap between these two positions, which is a really common Scruggs based idea, although I don't think it's anything that Earl played uh, back in the heyday of 50s and 60s. But this is in the Scruggs vein, even though it's a little more modern idea. But I thought we'd go ahead and add that to our repertoire of licks. Now, the lick itself is based on you playing this first string at uh, second fret, which is an E, and the second string at four, which is an E flat. And usually when you play two notes a half step apart, it's called a chromatic interval, you sometimes get this sound, which is called dissonance, which is not a good thing. But if you use dissonance in a roll pattern, it actually becomes a pretty effective uh, embellishment for lick development. So we're going to use this little bad sounding dissonance but not harp on it too much by playing a Scruggs roll, an inside out roll, one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five, pinch of C. So what we're doing is playing these two chromatic interval notes and playing a forward, or actually a backwards forward roll, inside out, one, two, one, five, one, two, and then the last time you play the first string, play it open, and then play the fifth open, then pinch. So let me fire the metronome up as eights. One, two, one, five, one, two, one, five, pinch. And again, this is about 100 beats a minute. Now let's play it in real time. There's a really effective Scruggs bass lick that maybe Earl didn't play in the beginning, but it's one that's become really popular and it's one you should definitely add to your repertoire of licks. Now let's move up to the uh, seventh and the fifth frets because this is going to be a great classic Scruggs lick. Every, everyone should know at this point in their playing, even if you're a beginner, that there's a bar chord at the fifth fret of the uh, strings. And this is a C bar chord. Now, by adding the first string at the uh, eighth fret, what I'm doing in essence is adding a blues note. This is a B flat note. Now, if I bar all the way across the fifth fret and then add with my pinky this B flat note on the first string at eight, I get a C7 chord, sometimes called C dominant seven, D-O-M, sometimes referred to as a flatted seven. Both, the both terms mean the same thing. And a, a seventh chord, in this case, with this flatted note added, is used as a blues chord. So one way to avoid having to hold all that is something pretty common in Scruggs style, which is to play a partial chord. So what Earl would do is hold the first string at uh, eight, and then he would add this E note on the fifth fret of the second string, which is one note out of the bar chord. So you don't have to hold the entire bar unless you need to. Typically you would hold these two strings and play a backwards roll, a la songs like Shucking the Corn. So the pattern is just one, two, five for the standard version of this lick. So let me fire the metronome up and just play one, two, five, one, two, Again, I can play it as many times as I want. If I need eight notes to fill a measure, I can play eight. But remember, typically you're going to play this as sixteenth notes. And remember, it's a good idea too when you're playing up the neck, up being this direction, that your right hand follows the left so that you can vary the tone of your banjo. Listen to the difference in this lick played at the X position, close to the bridge. 
Now I'm going to move to the Y position where the neck meets the body. So there's a lot of difference between X and Y and there's subtle changes that happen as you move from X to Y on the head. So when you play licks as we are moving up the neck, it's a good idea to try to experiment and practice moving your right hand up also to vary the tone of your banjo to make it sound as expressive as you can. Okay, so uh, we have the first lick. Now we've added this classic Scruggs lick. Now let's reuse that partial idea, and I'm going to just play the second string and the first string at five with my middle in my ring. And now I'm going to put my index finger on the fourth fret of the second string directly behind the middle finger. So I'm holding the fifth frets of the first and second string and then the fourth fret of the second string also. So I've got three fingers on the fingerboard but the index finger note is being canceled out. You can't hear it right now. What I'm going to do is reuse that Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll, 2-1-2-1-5-2-1, and I'm going to reuse the hammer idea. Remember this? Okay, now I don't have that open string to use to full advantage like I do here, but I can mimic it, mimic it excuse me, by holding the fourth fret note with the index finger. So that allows me to hammer to the fifth fret. And again, it's the same roll pattern, actually the same type of hammer, just on a different fret location. Here it is as eights. Okay, now here it is as sixteenths. Pretty commonly heard, pretty nicely, uh, well, nicely, pretty nice sounding <laughs> licks. One is a bridge lick that actually bridges the gap between this position and that one. Pretty commonly heard lick. And then the classic Scruggs lick from breaks like Chucking the Corn and a lot of other places. And then we have this rolling idea. So, like I've done in the previous videos, let me start the metronome up at about 100, and I'm going to play these licks in real time in 16th notes, and I'm going to switch from one lick to the other lick to the other lick. So I'll have three licks going at the same time. I put small uh, uh, pauses in there like a 8th note rest or 16th note rest or modified a roll slightly and again that's really what you want to do because you have to play these licks over and over and get them where you can play them individually in time but then the real problem or the real issue will come is how can you blend that lick with another lick or can you get from that lick and then get back to playing a roll that includes melody or maybe emphasize a melody note so again, just like we've done with all the videos, take these licks and play them back to back. You don't have to play them in the same order that I've just played them in, but make sure that they are with the metronome and that they are in time. Still staying in frets location 1 to 5, even though we use the pinky up here at 8, we're still basing the lick on the bar chord at the 5th fret. So add these ideas in and I'll see you next week. Thanks.